Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to our foundation level sample questions discussion. And as a part of this tutorial, we'll be getting ahead with the next chapter, which is chapter two, and looking some of the sample questions from this particular chapter to understand how we can tackle and understand and answer them the best. The very first thing to continue ahead is the question number nine, which uh, starts from the chapter two, and there'll be five questions from this chapter. Just to highlight in the chapter one, we had eight questions. And now we'll be having chapter two where five questions will be asked to you in the examination. The very first question here is, how can white box testing be applied during acceptance testing? Now, at this point, you should not be concentrating whether you remember what is acceptance testing or not. It is more about the subject that is white box testing. So you remember the comparison between the white box and the black box testing concepts. You know that white box is something which is done at the back end, that is the code level or something which is not done at the UI level, whereas the black box testing is something which is done at the front end, just like a common user. Now here, you would need to recall that understanding and start looking at the options. Because see, a white box testing can be applied at any particular level, and certainly there are no restrictions on that. There's a myth and there are a lot of misunderstanding that white box testing is a type of unit testing. Now, we never learned any such classifications, or there are no such any journals, any blog spots, or any, any specific, you know, governed authority saying that white box testing is a part of unit testing. It's just that white box and black box are two different approaches to conduct dynamic testing. And any of the levels can be using these approaches. So this question is pretty much valid. And you cannot say that it is invalid in white box testing and users work on it. Sorry, in acceptance testing and users are working on it. So they don't know what is code level. Don't get confused by that. It's just the level. And today in this particular world, today's time, even anyone, even the business can have a backend experienced users, right? Just to check many other things. So now you have to start looking at the option which answers your question at the backend level. So let's look at the option A, to check if large volume of data can be transferred between the integrated systems. Now, of course, when you talk about the large system or large set of data, it's not something which we really want to tackle about. So there's something more curious, you know, when you talk about the integration testing, right? It says between the integrated system. So can you observe that? There is a small catch here that integrated systems. So we have nothing to do with this right now as it is an acceptance testing level. So there can be certainly a test for the volume of data which can be transferred between the integrated system. And at the same time, they're giving you a hint that this is from integration testing and it is different from acceptance. Do you remember that? So that's not a valid option for us. B, to check if all code statements can code decision paths have been executed or like to check all the code statements and code decisions. This is going from the statement and decision coverage and certainly will highlight you to pick the right option. But this is from the component testing. If you remember, a given fragment of code is where we apply the you know statement coverage or decision coverage. It's not in the integration, it's not in the system, it's not in the acceptance, right? So in acceptance testing, we rather have the entire system built together as an application. So you cannot talk about statement coverage, which is for a particular program and applied there. So this is also talking from the component testing level as has nothing to do with the acceptance test level. So yes, it's code uh, statement coverage and decision coverage will ex you know attract you, but don't get into that trap. Let's look at C to check if all work process flows have been covered. Now that's something again, important to be discussed about, you know, Workflow process, business process, business flow process are all the item at the business perspective, right? A business is interested in these things that when you talk about the use cases, you talk about the overall business flow, your overall control flow. Yes, these are all done at the back end, at the white box level or white box approach. And yes, at the acceptance testing. In case you want to refer your syllabus or you have referred your syllabus very well, then you do understand this is one of the things which are tested as a part of acceptance testing. It is written in the syllabus as well. So sometimes the syllabus will help you to minimize your effort to get the right answer. So here for acceptance testing, the tests are designed to cover all supported financial data file structures and value range from 
uh, any specific transfers, right? So all the business workflows will be covered as a part of the acceptance testing. D, to cover all the web page navigation. Now, again, relevant to the system testing, which is not in the one of the items as a test object for the acceptance testing. So the right answer here is C, to check if all work process flows have been covered. Now that's how you make your job simpler to get the right answer and be confident about it. Explore, elaborate each of your options, justify yourself first. Are you talking about the right thing? Is it applicable at this point? And each word matters. Sometimes the board will not help you. It may be different and confusing because if you look at option B, you may say that it's confusing me, right? So that's not the case until unless you analyze it. All right, so let's look at the next question, which is question number 10. Which of the following statements comparing component testing and system testing is true? Straightforward, the definition. But everyone knows the definition, so this sounds very stupid and simple question, right? No. They will trick you around in these statements given to you. So options are critical compared to the question. So please read them thoroughly and patiently. Such type of questions must be read with a lot of patience. Because if you go wrong in one or the other words, not even the sentence, the words, then you think, oh, where's the right answer? Or all of them are right. Okay, let's see that happening right in front of us. Component testing, okay, starting with option A, component testing verifies the functionality of software modules, program objects, and classes that are separately testable, whereas system testing verifies interfaces between the components and interaction between different parts of the system. So part A for the component testing is absolutely correct, but the part B is wrong because it is defining CIT and SIT. Component integration testing tests the interfaces between the components and SIT tests the interaction between the parts of the system. Whereas this question is about component and system testing, not about CIT or SIT. So A is ruled out. B, test cases for component testing are usually derived from component specification, design specification, or data models whereas the test cases for system testing are usually derived from requirement specification or use cases. This statement is straightforward taken from the syllabus. If you see the bulleted points in the section 2.2, you wouldn't see that the test basis for a particular level will highlight these points to you. So they just wanted to check you, check with you, that did you really go through the official syllabus or those bulleted points which we highlighted to you. If you just remember those things, it would be very helpful. If you refer back to my tutorial on the same, you would find me highlighting these bulleted points very importantly, okay? So that gives you the, you know, understanding. Let's confirm with C and D as well. Never judge, even if you are very confident, please read the remaining options. C, component testing only focuses on functional characteristics, whereas system testing focuses on functional and non-functional characteristics. Now. Even the functional testing talks about non-functional. The reason is performance testing doesn't wait the entire system to get ready and then surprises. So some of the functional part, non-functional part, like security, non-functional like performance or usability testings can begin much at the component level itself. Like each program can be tested for responses. Each program can be tested for security flaws, right? So no, it's not restricted to uh, non-functional levels alone or system testing alone. Even component and integrations can have a little bit of non-functional testing. D, component testing is the responsibility of the tester, whereas the system testing is typically the responsibility of the users of the system. I think it's very straightforward. The users only conduct alpha or beta testing from acceptance. But here, we don't do that in system testing. So that's wrong again. So the right answer here is C, Component, sorry, right answer here is B, test cases for component testing are usually derived from component specification, design specification, or data models, whereas test cases for system testing are usually derived from requirement specification or use cases. Let's look at the next question here, question number 11. Which one of the following is true? No context, nothing, so everything depends on how you read the options. A. 
The purpose of regression testing is to check if the correction has been successfully implemented, while the purpose of confirmation testing is to confirm that the correction has no side effect. I think it's other way around, right? And uh, they are asking you here the definition of confirmation and regression. So the second part talks about regression, which is vice versa. And first part, I think it's more from the development side. We don't do that at all, which is to confirm a like, successful implementation. So let's go to B. The purpose of regression testing is to detect unintended side effect. Absolutely correct. While the purpose of confirmation testing is to check if the system is still working in a new environment. So the second part is wrong, which goes to the environment migration. So whenever you do migration from one environment to another environment, we generally perform regression again and has nothing to do with the confirmation testing. So the second part is wrong. The first part is correct. Let's go to C. The purpose of regression testing is to detect unidentified side effect, while the purpose of confirmation testing is to check if the original defect has been fixed. I think that's fitting the purpose and giving us the right answer for this and meeting the exact definitions of confirmation and regression testing. But let's look at D. The purpose of regression testing is to check if the new functionality is working. Now, regression is a maintenance test and can be performed or repeated again and again whenever there is a fix or change involved. So as far as it is related to change, then new features are not in the scope of this. While the purpose of confirmation testing is to check if the original defect has been resolved. That means the second part is correct, but the first part is wrong. So what I wanted to highlight you here is that sometime the partial reading can, you know, misguide you. And all I want you to do is make sure that you read every single word carefully, patiently, so that you don't get confused with the, the options. So more importantly, you need to make sure that you are reading every options appropriately and at the same time, trying to get an inference out of it that what seems to be the best right answer. If you get confused, of course, you will pick the wrong answers and then you would say, I was almost right in everything. I don't know where did I go wrong. So the right answer here is C, the purpose of regression testing is to detect unintended side effects, while the purpose of confirmation testing is to check if the original defect has been fixed. With that, we will be holding on here and talking about the remaining two questions from chapter two in the next tutorial and similarly continue with the other tutorials. So that's all from this particular video team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to answer your queries and help them out. Feel free to let me know at any point of time. I'll be more than happy to respond to you. Till then, take care and happy learning.